Hey guys, what's up? Abby here, and welcome to my Unholy DK, Unholy Frenzy guide for Battle for Azeroth. This will go over the talents, the opener, and some other miscellaneous different things that I'd like to go over in the video. So I hope you guys enjoy, and if you do, make sure at the end to give it a like if you did like the video. And also I uploaded the Frost guide that you can go check, and I will also be uploading different build guides such as the Summon Gargoyle build and the... Uh, Army of the Damned build. So look out for those as well. First, we're going to go over the talent build for Unholy DKs. So the talent build is going to be single target talent build with AoE and other single target alternatives. So first on the 56 tier, the single target go to is all will serve. However, Clawing Shadows is very, very, very close. And actually, I like Clawing Shadows in certain instances when you're going to be away from the boss for certain periods. Let's take, for instance, the first boss in the raid, Talik. So for Talik, you can sometimes get a debuff on you that requires you to run away from the group. But this is a great talent in order to maintain uptime on the boss. And also when he runs away for his cudgel, when you can't follow him because you don't want to take fall off damage both times when he goes to throw his cudgel and goes to retrieve it. This is a really good talent for those kind of instances where you're going to be attacking targets away from yourself or your group and you can't actively follow them. In fact, the clause is good in AoE situations. It does synergize very nicely with Bursting Swords if you choose to run this talent. And there is a meme build going around where you run like Triple Festermite, which I actually, if I switch up Glacial Contagion, I actually have Triple Festermite on my gear. There's a nice little meme build with that that I won't really go over in this video because it's not burned into the video. So next up, the 57 tier. The go-to single target talent is Ebon Fever. Bursting Swords is an AoE alternative. And again, there's a meme build going around, and Holy Blight is not close to either of these for single target or AoE. Ebon Fever is just really good. Yes, it requires you to dump more runes into Outbreak in a fight, but Virulent Plague does so much damage that it doesn't even really matter. Next up, the 58 tier. In the 58 tier, you're going to run whatever you feel. Grip of the Dead is good in certain instances. Asphyxiate is good in certain instances. Run whatever you feel you need for the situation that you're in. The 60 tier... Soul Reaper is just absolutely phenomenal. It does pretty good damage. It does generate two runes, which is the main reason why we're running it. But also, if the target does die while well, under the dot effect of Soul Reaper, you gain a haste buff. It's a versatile talent that you can throw on trash mobs to gain the haste buff that you can throw on the boss in order to actually gain a little bit of single target damage. Whatever you feel you need for the situation, that's what makes this talent so strong is the versatility of it. And Peshtun Pustules is an alternative. You can run it. It's a good talent, but it's an RNG talent. I like Soul Reaper because it's just no RNG involved. I love that about it. Harbinger of Doom, not very good in general. Just not a very good talent at all. 75 tier, run whatever you feel. Same thing for the Frost video. I like Wraithwalk because it's a nice movement ability. I like Death Pack for world questing and open world content. Spell Eater is really good in certain instances where mobs are hitting you too hard through AMS and you need a little bit more AMS. The 90 tier. For single target, the only one that really adds good single target is Pestilence. Defile does add a little bit of single target. And Epidemic is, without a doubt, one of the best AoE talents in the game, I think. It's just incredible. The more you pull, the more damage it does, just like Virulent Eruption already does. Epidemic is nice on top of that. Pestilence does make Death and Decay relatively DPS neutral, although a little bit of a DPS gain. So you're not losing much by not using Death and Decay. And if the target is going to be out of your Death and Decay, not halfway through or quarter through or three quarters through then you're just better off not throwing down that death and decay or throw it down if you want it's up to you with that instance if you really feel like the boss isn't going to move much and on raid bosses you know when they're going going to be moving so you can plan out your death and decay appropriately there for the hundred tier it's unholy frenzy it's just a really strong talent not just because of the haste buff that it gives but the inflicting a target with Festering Wound is very, very strong because it just means you can cast Festering Strike less and Scourge Strike or Clawing Shadows more. And that's really nice to not have to dump runes into the generator, but dump it into the spender. I love that about it. The haste buff is also really nice. It's a fairly short cooldown, a minute and 20 seconds, something like that. 
It's just a really nice talent. The other talents are okay, but not nearly as good as Unholy Frenzy. And in AoE situations, Unholy Frenzy is just way better. So that's that. So next is the consumables and the enchants. For your consumables, you're going to be running with the Potion of Bursting Blood for single target and po Battle Potion of Strength for AoE 2 plus targets. And for your enchantments, you're going to be using Rune of Fallen Crusader for your weapon. And also for your ring enchants, you're going to use whatever stat is simming highest for you. I recommend using Raid Bot stat weights in order to find out which stat is simming highest for you at the moment with your gear. Same thing with gems. So now the opener section for Unholy DKs with Unholy Frenzy. So for the opener, you're of course going to do the army pre-pull at around 5 to 6 seconds. And then we're going to go in with the rotation that I'll show you guys here. So first off, let's start with army. Now this is of course with this cookie cutter talent build. And then we're waiting for some runes to respawn. And now we go in with Outbreak, Darts, Transformation, Unholy Frenzy, one Festering Strike. I'm going to use that Sudden Doom proc, try to get another Festering Wound without actually using my own Festering Strike there. You, just, you don't really want to use Festering Strike when Unholy Frenzy is up because it's just, that's the point of Unholy Frenzy. And as you can see there, I refreshed Outbreak when it was about to fall off. And then I'm just dumping my Festering Wounds. As you can see, I am only using my Festering Strike when I have zero Festering Wounds. And the simple reason for that is it's the most efficient to prevent downtime. So that's that. That is your opener for Unholy Decay. As you can see, it's really good burst. It's class burst, incredibly high. And especially with Lust, you can get hit some ridiculously high burst numbers. Now, last but not least, I have a little thing about Azerite gear. So I'm not going to tell you what Azerite gear is best, because this, if I do, this video is outdated in a couple days if they decide to change some things. But there's no way this video stays relevant if I do give you the best Azerite gear. So I am going to show a website on the screen called Blood Mallet. I highly recommend using this website in order to rank your Azerite gear and see what is better. And also, use Raidbots in order to sim. Raidbots has a great system in top gear that allows you to sim different Azerite traits. The APL is up updated very, very frequently, so you can make sure that it is up to date. I highly recommend using those two resources. So that concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give it a like button. And if you have any questions, comment down below. I highly recommend joining the Death Knight Discord Acarus if you do want to ask any specific questions. There are a lot of people in there that are super nice and very willing to help. And also you can follow me on Twitter, which is also down below. And I will also put a link to the DK Discord down below so you can also join that if you haven't already and again make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more videos i'm doing a lot more videos in battle for azeroth than i did at the end of legion so look out for them and i'll talk to you guys later have a good one